Hello and welcome to the history of Babylon 5. Today's episode will be covering part 4 of Delenn's history. And here we go. In the final days of the Narn Centauri War, Delenn is contacted by Drawl via the Great Machine. He invites her and Sheridan to come to Epsilon 3 for a visit. The machine has restored his youth and vigor. Sheridan and Delenn journey down to the planet. Drawl greets them and offers them the services of the Great Machine in the upcoming war. During their meeting, he is alerted to a distress call and tells them that they are needed back on the station. The Centauri had begun orbital bombardment of Narn itself. When the news breaks on the station, mass riots erupt. Sheridan has a security team escort Delenn back to her quarters. Four days later, Londo Malari calls a session of the Babylon 5 Advisory Council and the League of Non-Aligned Worlds, announcing that the Narn regime has offered complete and unconditional surrender to the Centauri Republic. As one of the terms of the surrender, Londo insists that Jakar, now stripped of his rank, return to Narn for trial. Sheridan announces that Jakar has requested sanctuary on the station, and that he has granted it. Delenn announces that the Membari Federation will support Sheridan's decision. However, neither she nor Sheridan are able to prevent Malari from having Jakar removed from the Advisory Council and barred from future League sessions. Afterwards, Delenn, Kosh, and Michael Garibaldi introduce Sheridan to the Rangers. Delenn transfers joint control of the Rangers in that area to Sheridan. Kosh, however, has concerns regarding Delenn, he wants to ensure that she is indeed the right person in the right place at the right time. He insists that she submit to an inquisitor and that her life will depend on her passing his tests. She approaches Sheridan and requests that an isolated area be sealed off for the test and that the inquisitor be allowed to come aboard without any trouble. Sheridan is uneasy not completely understanding why Kosh has made the request but agrees to go along with it. After the Inquisitor comes aboard and is ready for her, she goes alone to face her test, unsure if she will walk out alive. The Inquisitor has Delenn put a pain giver on, using them to bring her pain for incorrect answers. However, he only really asks one question, who are you? Delenn struggles to find the answer he seeks, but is unable to satisfy him. After several hours of torturous questioning, he briefly leaves her just as Lanier comes in looking for her. He tries to get her to leave, but she insists that she must see it through to the end. Lanier then goes and alerts Sheridan, who comes alone to find her. The Inquisitor seizes Sheridan and begins torturing him. Seeing this, Delenn confronts him, telling him to return his attentions to her. He asks if she is willing to die for him, and she replies that life is her cause, that one life or a billion is the same. The Inquisitor is pleased allowing them both to leave and telling them that they are indeed the right people. Stirred on by their victories, the Centauri Republic soon begin a series of violent campaigns against several of its neighbors. When Sheridan offers sanctuary to a Narn heavy cruiser, a firefight erupts outside the station involving a Centauri battlecruiser. The Centauri ship is destroyed, but the Earth Alliance insists Sheridan offer a formal apology in the gardens before a host of ambassadors and others. Delenn and Kosh wait in one of the isolated corners of the Zen Garden, but suddenly the core shuttle carrying Sheridan explodes. He manages to dive out, but is falling too quickly for anyone to rescue him. Delenn appeals to Kosh, asking him to save Sheridan. Kosh complies, stepping out of his encounter suit and revealing himself as a being of light to all assembled. He flies up and rescues Sheridan. Afterwards, Delenn explains to Sheridan that the Vorlons have been visiting the younger races for many thousands of years, arguably manipulating them so they will respond favorably when they see them. Kosh only appeared to some, not all of those in the garden, however. Delenn warns Sheridan that his appearance will be an alarm to the shadows, but it was a risk that they had to take. Working in secret with the Rangers, Delenn was involved with the construction of a new class of Membari ship, the White Star. This revolutionary design was compact, powerful, faster than almost anything in normal space, and could open its own jump point. In early 2260, a member of Earth Force Special Alliance named David and Dowie arrived on the station, seeking information about a few seconds of video that captured a shadow vessel. He asked Delenn and Captain Sheridan if they can identify it. Delenn offers a half-truth. She has never actually seen one until that moment. 
even though she does know exactly what it is. At the same time, a ranger named Marcus Cole slipped aboard Babylon 5, pursued by mercenaries working for the Shadows. Marcus contacted Delenn through Lanier and asked to meet her in Down Below. After proving his identity, he warned her of a Centauri blockade around a Drazi colony world where many rangers had been sent for training. As they left Down Below, the three of them were attacked by mercenaries after Marcus, but they managed to fight him off. Delenn and Marcus asked Sheridan to help lift the blockade so the rangers may escape. Sheridan and Ivanova come with them in a shuttle to a place where the White Star is waiting. Once aboard, Delenn offers the vessel to Sheridan and explains its many features. An elated Sheridan orders them to head for the colony as fast as they can. Once they arrive, they discover that all the Centauri ships are gone, but a powerful system of orbital satellites maintain the blockade. The White Star easily shoots down enough of them to allow the Rangers to escape the planet. However, a shadow vessel jumps into local space and attacks. And we'll be right back after this. Delenn is fearful of the shadow vessel, sure that the White Star cannot oppose it directly. Sheridan orders the ship to flee, using the local jump gate to hide the fact that the White Star can form its own jump point. The shadow ship follows them into hyperspace. Once they arrive at the Markab homeworld, Sheridan orders them to exit through the jump gate, then opens a jump gate inside the gate. The maneuver destroys the gate in a massive explosion that wipes out the shadow vessel along with it. Once back on Babylon 5, Delenn covers for Sheridan, saying his absence was the result of his assistance in helping a Minbari diplomatic shuttle that had been in distress. Once Ndawi leaves, Sheridan calls his senior staff together to give them the whole story about the shadows and the oncoming war. Delenn explains the full history of the last great war and what must be done to save the future. A few days later, Delenn arrives for Mimbar to continue her work for preparing for the war. Upon her return, a bomb explodes in the customs area just as she embarked. Lanier, there to meet her, saves her and Ambassador Malari from the explosion, but is severely wounded in the process. He is rushed to Medlap, where Delenn stays with him for a time, upset over the incident. The bombing was one of a series by an insane bomber. Sheridan and Mr. Garibaldi eventually are able to find and arrest the bomber. Lanier awakens in Medlab while Delenn is visiting him. He eventually makes a full recovery. Soon thereafter, Londo comes to visit Delenn. Their relationship is now icy at best, but Londo asks her for a favor, recalling the time when he helped her and Drawl. He quickly explains that the favor is not for himself, but for his aide, Veer Kato. Londo thinks Veer would be the perfect person to send to the currently defunct Centauri Embassy on Mimbar. Delenn asks why he is doing this for Veer, and Londo quietly says that he is very fond of his assistant and thinks it would be far better for him to be away from what is coming. However, when Delenn suggests that Londo needs Veer, he coldly rejects any such sentiment. Delenn agrees to the request and soon Veer is on his way to Membar. A group of human monks led by Brother Theo establishes themselves on Babylon 5 in an effort to learn more about alien beliefs and religions. As true seekers, they are welcomed cordially by Delenn and Lanier, who agree to talk with them about Membari beliefs. A monk named Brother Edward is one sent to talk with them but is tragically killed soon thereafter. Delenn and Sheridan's newly formed War Council begins meeting regularly. Drawl begins attending with them. The two of them talk to the others about the first ones. How they were important in the last war and how, if any remain, they would be instrumental in turning the tides against the shadows. The Council agrees that they must try to find them however possible. Working with Drawl, Ivanova is able to locate the Walkers of Sigma 957 and manages to convince them to stand when the time comes. At the next meeting of the Council, Sheridan warns them that Alfred Bester, a human telepath, is coming to the station. Sheridan and the others explain to Delenn that they do not trust him not to scan them, which would unearth everything that they've been working for in secret. Delenn offers the use of a team of telepaths to block Bester from trying anything until they convince him to take the sleepers, a drug that inhibits his abilities, while on the station. They are all grateful when he departs, after helping bust open an illegal drug smuggling ring. 
Working with the Rangers, Michael Garibaldi arranges for a former member of the IPX, Dr. Kirkish, to come aboard Babylon 5. She tells about a shadow vessel that was found on Mars a few years ago. That ship was recovered by another shadow vessel and Kirkish was reassigned, ordered not to say anything to anyone about what she had seen. Recently, however, another ship was discovered on Ganymede. Earth Force was planning on reactivating the ship within a week. After making arrangements for Kirkish to go to Mimbari space for her safety, Delenn and Sheridan form a desperate plan to destroy the shadow vessel before it can come online. Leaving his uniform and all identification behind, Sheridan captains the White Star with Delenn and Lanier on a mission towards Earth. As they head through hyperspace, Delenn and Sheridan enjoy some time together in the crew quarters. As Sheridan is unused to sleeping on Mimbari beds, Delenn tells him that she will watch and catch him should he fall. When they arrive in Earth space, the White Star jumps in near Ganymede and quickly heads for the site where the vessel is being experimented upon. They pick up a transmission that someone is about to enter the ship. Delenn explains to Sheridan that the shadow ships are using living beings as their central processing systems and warns that whomever is going inside is not prepared. They arrive at the moon too late as the shadow ship becomes fully operational and destroys a facility where it is being held before rising above the moon. They realize that the ship is insane as the merger did not go as it was supposed to. Sheridan orders the White Star to attack it, and while they do not cause any significant damage, they do get it to follow them. The White Star flies into Jupiter with the vessel in pursuit, far enough inside the gas giant for the shadow ship to be trapped by the gravity well and to be destroyed. As they prepare to exit the planet, however, the EAS Agamemnon turns up and orders their surrender. Delenn suggests opening up a jump point while still inside the atmosphere. A risky move, but one that allows them to escape. ISN reports the incident as an unknown alien ship being destroyed after launching an unprovoked attack on the colony. That same day, EA President Morgan Clark uses the incident as an excuse to declare martial law. And we'll be right back after this. Chaos and all-out war follow in the ensuing weeks. A badly injured ranger arrives on the station, warning about the pilots of the Shadows coming to fruition. He explains to Delenn that the Shadows have made alliances with half of the members of the League of Non-Aligned Worlds, convincing them to accept their protection against the might of the Centauri Republic. But, once allied with a force so powerful, they were then seduced into going into war for conquest with their neighbors. Asking how the Grey Council has responded to this news, the rangers mournfully relate the Council has declared that the problems of others are not our concern. Outraged over their complacency, Delenn leaves Babylon 5, heading directly for the Grey Council's ship. Despite messages that they will refuse to see her, Delenn boards the ship and marches right into their chamber, chiding them for standing idly by while chaos and destruction threatens the entire galaxy. She reminds them of her often repeated warnings and how they dismiss them. Accusing them of pride and breaking their covenant with Balin, Delenn seizes the leadership staff and snaps it in two, declaring that the council is broken, as Valen himself prophesied years ago. If the warrior caste would not act, then the other castes will. She then leads the representatives of the religious and worker classes out of the chamber, preparing to do what is necessary to win the war against the Shadows. Back at Babylon 5, the station declared independence from the Earth Alliance in protest over the illegal actions conducted by President Clark. This action led directly for the battle for Babylon 5 independence. After the initial task force sent by Clark is destroyed, a second wave force arrives, one that will overwhelm the station's defenses. Delenn leads the White Star and three Charlin-class Mimbari war cruisers to the station. She declares that Babylon 5 is under the protection of the Membari, and if the task force does not withdraw, it will be destroyed. The Earth vessels quickly withdraw. Delenn comes aboard the station and is met by Sheridan in the customs area, who thanks her for the rescue. Hey, thank you for watching the history of Babylon 5. Special thanks to the Babylon Project and all contributors for all information you heard today. Also, special thanks to Royalty Free Tube for the fantastic background. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you have, thank you, and have a nice day. 
Oh, and stay tuned for part five in about a week or less. In one week or less, part five to Lynn. I don't know. Bye-bye!